Hey guys, and welcome to Faith Works Designs. I'm Faith, and today we're doing another exciting video from Kimmy B Custom Fabrics. Now, in today's tutorial, we are going to make a cribbler. Yes, I know, I am very, very excited about this. Um, there's also two options. So I'm gonna show you today's video, and then I'm gonna show you some options if you wanted to do a different lining. So in the beginning, and the, the front and the back is just pretty plain. There's nothing on the outside for like cell phone pockets or anything like that. I wanted to keep it plain so that you could see the quibbler's face. Then on the inside, when you unsnap it, there is a secret pocket. Uh, in the back, there's a nice secret pocket so that if you want to slip your cell phone in there and you don't want it to fall out or if you don't want somebody knowing where something's at in your purse, it's a nice little secret pocket that when you open it up, you don't automatically you don't automatically see it until you kind of put your hand in there and you're like, ooh. So it's a good size pocket for anything that you want to put in there. Um, then we also have a zipper pocket and then some really cute Luna Love Good glasses. Hopefully you can see that. And then on the other side, we're going to do something that I love to death to do, and I do with them in like all of my purses because it's cool. Um, I want, a lot of people have started wanting card slots in their purses. Now, I like a wallet, people like card slots, see, but there are 14 credit card slots, and then in the back of the credit card slots, there's just like a uh, slip pocket, so if you want to put your cell phone there, you could do it there. And then in the other design, this is... I'm so sad that you don't actually like get to see it except for when it's unflapped, but it's it's still cute. So all together it's a fairly easy sew. I will say this though, real quick. Um, if you have a domestic, she's gonna get thick. So I would highly suggest um, the inside flap comes with the pattern. Um, so I would omit this one and use like a regular cotton. Uh, otherwise, because you're gonna be having two layers of vinyl right here, a layer of vinyl and a layer of um, quilt cotton or whatever you use for a lining right here. So that's gonna be a lot of layers. So keep that in mind when you first go to do it. Now, in the pattern, it comes in a roll and this is what you're gonna need. Um, you're gonna get all of the outside fabric, the gusset, the, the front and the back pockets, all of that. The only thing you're not going to get is the lining on the inside. So keep that in mind. You are going to need lining. You are also going to need some uh, little tabs for your D-rings to go on. Um, just small stuff like that. We can't fit everything on a panel for you guys. Um, but it's close enough. So that's the first bag. And this is what we're going to put together today. But there is also a book bag. So we took the same exact panel set. It all came in a roll, I got two of them, but I wanted to be able to have um, a bag that I could carry as a purse or a bag that I could carry as a book bag because I'm a book bag where I need my hands free. So there will be another video to follow up, but this has adjustable straps and then, and then you can use it as a book bag. So that's gonna be in a whole nother video along with there's also another lining so if you like the purse but you're more of a person like me where you want to have um, say like a zipper at the top so nobody can get into your stuff or none of your stuff can fall out there's going to be another video that just covers the book bag part and then this lining so you'll still have your secret pocket here but you'll have all of your stuff secured with a zipper so it's just up to you but in today's video we are doing the plain uh, purse which is fine it's nice easy simple so it could be it can be put together pretty quickly so let's get started okay so we've got all of our pieces all cut out I want to show you kind of what you need to be cooking with so that you're cooking with Crisco um, in the pattern you get the very front and then you get another of the stripe piece this goes on the back of this um, so you don't need any lining or anything for this the next thing that you should have cut out and I want to show you you see that blue line that goes all the way around? That's around um, all of your pieces. You need to cut on the outside of that blue line. So you're just cutting away um, the white from the outside. You need to take these pieces and you need to cut out 
two linings. Now Kennedy has a coordinate fabric so I'm using that today as my lining. You're going to need just two of those. Next thing that you're going to need to do is grab your bottom gusset piece. It's a really long piece. You're going to use this and trace out your lining fabric, whatever it is, and just trace it like so that you so that you have your lining fabric. The next thing that you're going to need is your strap connectors, which are four and a half inches by two inches. Then you're going to need to cut out a piece of Decoville light that is three quarters by three and three quarters. Put it in the middle and then mark a line down the center. You're going to need two of those. That's going to help you connect your D-rings and that way you can have your straps on the side. Now for mine, I went ahead and I grabbed my um, Harriet bag and I grabbed this piece out of it. So if you don't have that pattern, you need to have an eight inch wide opening for your bag because this is what we are most likely going to turn the bag inside out. I, I'm either going to do a drop in bag or I'm going to do a pull through a zipper. I haven't made up my mind yet. Um, <laughs> I The way that I did it before was a drop in but I don't like drop-ins, but I don't know that I want to pull it through this either. So you can do it that way. If you want to do a drop-in, it's the bag is made so that you can do it. But if you just like the top stitching everything in like a pull-out bag, then do it through there. But if you don't have that pattern, just go ahead and do an eight inch wide hole. And I'm just going to put this on there because I just feel like it'd be a little more decorative. And I'll show you how to do the zipper pocket when we get to the lining. All right, so let's get this lining done. Um, I have two linings, so just ignore that. I'm making two bags. Um, so I went ahead and got the Herrera, however you say that name, <laughs> uh, zipper template. I went ahead and cut that out. You've got one of your lining pieces. And then I went and I put two pieces of double-sided tape right down the middle because you're going to be sewing on the outside and then you're going to be sewing on the inside so make sure that you put the tape right down the middle so that you don't sew on it and get your needle all gucky. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the tape off of what should be like your your top. I put the zipper template about an inch and a half from the top and then I put down the top first, rub that down and then take the bottom tape off and it should just lay right where it's supposed to be. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to sew all the way around the edges. Hopefully you can see that. I'm using my rainbow thread from Wizardry Stitchery because I love I love how it looks with especially with this fabric. So sew that up and then we will work on to adding the zipper. All right. So, you're going to need to grab two pieces of fabric that are six and a half by ten wide. Um, if you're using cotton, just go ahead and interface them. It just gives them a little more stability. Um, then you're going to grab a ten inch zipper and with the wrong side of the fabric to the right side of your zipper, you're going to sew that down. After you've sewn across there, you're going to flip it up and then you're going to top stitch. It should look like that. Now I went ahead and did both sides on this one so you can see what it looks like. And that way the right side of your lining is inside of your zipper. So when you open up your zipper, you'll see the right side of your fabric. All right, so you've got your zipper pieces. Mine's all wavy because my machine hates cotton fabric. So it's a bit of wavy. Um, all right, so we're going to grab this part. I went ahead and put some double-sided tape on both the top and the bottom. Don't put it near this edge because that's where you're going to be sewing. So I am going to take off the bottom tape first. And I'm going to lay it as centered as you can get it over top of my zipper. You can just check on the sides to make sure you see zipper. 
and then I'm also going to straighten this out as I sew. All right, take the top tape off. Get that zipper out of the way. Did you see how cute the zipper is? Like legitimately, how cute is that? Okay, <laughs> now what we're going to do with all of this flat. So you're going to sew right where your stitches from your side are going to meet all the way over to this side right there. We're not going all the way around. We're just going to go across the top. And you're also going to want to make your stitches into a four, your stitch length. You know, I sat right there and did one first so that I wouldn't mess up. <laughs> You're supposed to do the bottom first. Dang it. <laughs> All right, we're fixed. I don't like picking out vinyl because those holes, once you put them there, they're there. It's not like cotton where you can kind of rub your finger and they'll straighten up. All right, next thing you can do is take this and fold it over and pull it as much as you can because you're going to have that double sided tape fighting against you and you are going to have some extra fabric down here. We'll cut that off when we get done. All right, so the next thing you're going to do is we're going to start on this corner, sew down here, sew down across, and then back up again. Alright, after you get all of the top done and the back, you're going to see that there's excess fabric here. You can go ahead and cut that off. Ow. And then we're going to clip the sides and the bottom because we're going to sew all the way around this so that we can close it up. Okay, so you're going to take it, fold this top edge over. You're going to come down, lift this out of your way, come down, lift the other side out of your way, and then up. Make sure that you backstitch at your zippers. All right, so we've got both of our lining pieces ready. Um, we just did this one. Now, I did this one off camera because I do have a video that shows how to make the card slots, and I didn't want this video to be 9 million years long. So, um, if you watch this video, I'll post a picture here. You, you can figure out all of the me I give all of the measurements and everything for the card slot itself. Follow that, and then I just added fabric on each side so that it looked like it was like one piece. So, the inside of the lining is all done. The next thing that you need to go to do is you need to make a little clip here and then a little clip at the top on both of your lining pieces. Then grab your long lining piece and do the same thing. Find the middle and make a little clip. That is how we're going to put our lining together. So we'll meet up, we'll meet up our middles, and then you'll just clip all the way, Ugh, you can't see from there, then you'll just clip all the way around. All right, so we're all clipped up, and here's what we're going to do. When we take this to the sewing machine, you're going to start out at a quarter of an inch seam allowance right here, and then start about here start going into half an inch. You want your lining to fit in your um, purse just right. And if you use the same seam allowance, the lining will be too big. It'll be a little, a little bulky. So start at a quarter inch here, kind of wait till about here, go half an inch, half an inch, half an inch, half an inch, about here, start going back up to a quarter of an inch right there. If you do half an inch all the way around, the lining and the outside fabric won't meet up when we go to do the drop-in lining. So just make sure you start at a quarter inch here and then go half an inch around the bottom and the sides and then back up to a quarter of an inch.
All right, so we've got this side is all done. The side with our card slots is attached. Now you're going to want to attach the other side and do the same exact thing. Quarter of an inch here, half an inch ish here, here, and then back to a quarter of an inch. I normally turn it over like this so that that side's on the bottom that I'm sewing. Just it, it makes it a whole lot easier. All right, guys, we are getting close to the end. Yay! So we're gonna grab our flap and our flap lining. So we've got our flap here, and then we've got our inside lining with it um, right side down you're going to find the center of the bottom and the bottom is going to be that little kind of rounded off part and the back is going to kind of come up into a v so you're going to find that middle part and then you're going to cut a little notch you're going to cut a little notch in it so that we can kind of meet up everything when we get ready to um, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and put it in the center and then mark a, an inch and a half up. So I've made my little mark. Then you, you need a snap, a magnetic snap. Hopefully you can see it. Or the male end and then the female end. We're going to grab this one right here. It's the thicker of the two. So you can see how it stands out. I find that when I put these on the flap and the other ones on like the bag, it ends up closing a lot easier. So we're going to grab this one. And then you should have these little washers that come with your magnetic snaps. And I also always use this one-sided uh, one sided interfacing. And then I will mark that and I'm going to take my seam ripper and for both, I'm gonna just take, I'm gonna take my washer, I'm gonna lay it down, and I'm gonna mark both those lines in the center, which hopefully you can see. And then I'm gonna take my seam ripper and open those up. Then I'm gonna take my snap from the right side, and then I'm gonna lay it down, put my one-sided interfacing, and then my washer. And then you just bend those down just like that then you're going to grab your front and you're going to put right sides together just like that and then you're going to clip all the way around and then at a quarter of an inch seam allowance you're going to sew all the way around the edges except for this end. We need this end open so that we can turn it inside out. So go ahead and sew this up. Start up here. Go all the way down and around. Make sure that you leave this open. Alright, so we got everything sewn and if you can see here I did um, some double stitching. So I went on the side and I stitched all the way around and then I came back and I did it again. You know how sometimes you turn your vinyl inside out and you have kind of like puckering, almost like the seams are kind of bursting? Um, that'll prevent that. You just sew your quarter of an inch and then sew over just a smidgen so that it'll kind of, it's just kind of like it's back up, you know? All right, so make sure that you left this side open and you're going to pull it all the way inside out. And um, I also forgot to mention that I did interface one side with Decoville Light and the other side I didn't because it, both sides are vinyl and it was thick <laughs> and it was hard to get turned inside out. So don't do that. Don't do that. All right. Next thing we're going to do. We are going to get our backing piece. And I decided this is going to be the back because I'd really like this to be on the front. You can vice versa once you see the purse done. Um, you can kind of decide what you want to do. So I grab this as my bag, and with the right side facing up, you're going to slide that under after you've turned this inside out. You're going to slide this underneath of there and get it nice and flat on your um, cutting board or on your cutting mat because we're going to have to make two different measurements. Um, you're also going to need 
some sort of marking tool so that you can kind of mark um, where our top stitching is going to start and stop and then down at the bottom because it's kind of broken up. So first thing we're going to measure is from the top of your back panel, we're going to measure about a half an inch up. From this back panel right here, you're going to measure a half an inch up. This is going to give us our first top stitching that we're going to have to do. So we're going to start top stitching here, go all the way around the top flap, and then back down to here. Make sure that you back stitch once and then forward again. I'll take you to my sewing machine so you can see what I'm doing. Alright guys, so we got our top all top stitched on this end. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay this flat on our cutting mat, make sure that it's kind of along a line so that we can kind of see what we're doing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to line up the very bottom and then center this the best you can. Now you can make a clip right here and then you can make a clip right there and then kind of center them if that will help you out. Um, so I'm just going to clip those there. All right, so here's your next measurement. I'm going to take your ruler and from the very top, like we did our last measurement, from the very top, we're going to measure down three quarters of an inch. Random measurement? Yep. Now, from your back panel, measure three quarters of an inch down. Now. I'm going to take you to the sewing machine so you can see what I'm doing, but here's, audibly, here's what I'm doing. So I'm going to start right here around on uh, the edge, about an eighth of an inch or so. I'm going to make sure that I make a stitch, back stitch, and then start stitching forward, come all the way down, all the way around, and then all the way back up to right here. Then, don't, don't pick up your stitches. So I would make a stitch back stitch and then stitch forward. This is going to be your secret pocket, okay? So we're going to need a little bit of strength on this secret pocket because it might be pulled on a lot. So after you get to this side, you're going to go over one and then we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch all the way down and around and back up again, making sure that you um, stitch, back stitch, and stitch up again and then I'm going to make those two stitches meet the quarter of an inch and the eighth of an inch. I'm going to take you to the sewing machine so you can see what I'm doing but I just wanted to let you know kind of audibly what I'm doing. <laughs> all right so we got our panel everything's on there we've got it all marked now we're going to go an eighth of an inch we're going to go one stitch and then back stitch and then forward stitch. Okay, so we're going forward stitch. Then I'm going to take a forward stitch and I'm going to take a back stitch. And then a forward stitch. All right, now we're going to turn it like this. We're going to take one stitch, uh, then pivot. <laughs> All right. Um, again, this is going to give us a little more stability. Um, again, with the pocket being used so much, and then just go down. I'm following my foot right here. This is about an eighth of an inch so I'm just gonna follow that foot and it's so backwards <laughs> I'm used to starting from one side and going to the other now go ahead and go all the way down to the eighth of an inch down here we don't need to see the stitching at the bottom okay 
and then just follow that around. If you want to now, go ahead and stop and pull that thread through like that so that all of your threads are on the back and we can burn those later when we get done. All right, then meet up with your other stitch where you started and you're gonna go over one, back one, and then forward one, and then pull it out. Should look like that. And then when you flip it over, you got your nice vinyl pocket right there, so it's nice and secret. You won't see it. All right, we're getting there, people. All right, the next thing you're going to need to do is grab the two by four pieces of vinyl. I went ahead and just got uh, white. You can get another kind of vinyl that matches a little bit better if that if you have that in your stash. Um, the next thing that I did was I put a little bit of Decoville Light in the middle just for strength. Um, I think I did about a three quarters of an inch and then just tried to put it in the middle as best I could. Then made a line down the center. Then I put a thing of double sided tape. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the double sided tape off. And then we're going to meet in the middle. Just like that. And then you're going to make a mark in the center. So at the two inch mark, you're going to make a little mark in the center, just like that. And then we're going to get some more double sided tape, just a little bit. We're going to go right in the middle. So just a little bit of tape. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to pull the double sided tape off and you're going to have this end come up right to here and then kind of push it down. And then you're going to grab your D-ring. Um, I would say about an inch. For some reason I ordered an inch and a half. So we are where we are. Slide the D-ring on and then close it up just like that. Next thing you're going to do is grab some more double sided tape. <laughs> Just a little piece. You don't want a big, huge piece because you don't want to sew over this. But I put it right across the opening. Just like that. Then we're going to grab our bottom gusset. And then I need my ruler. Then we're going to mark about an inch from the top or an inch and a quarter, sorry. We're going to mark an inch and a quarter from the top and put the top of your strap right at an inch and a quarter. So take that tape off. Make sure everything's even. Kind of put it in the center, just like so. And then get your marking tool again. I hate marking on this white. It's for some reason, this vinyl does not like marking whatsoever. Okay, so about three quarters from the top of the white, you're going to make a little mark. And what you're going to do is you're going to start stitching here, go all the way down to the bottom, up and across. And then making sure that you back stitch. You're just going to make a little box so that you close this up and that your D-ring can't come off or out. So let's go to the sewing machine and do that. You guys sick of me moving you around yet? <laughs> We're gonna try another angle so I don't have to keep moving the camera. All right, so. I put a notch in our very back panel, and then you're gonna have notches in your uh, bottom gusset. And we've got our D-rings all on, they're ready to go. 
You're going to put right sides together, meeting up your notches in the bottom. And we're working on the back first because we got one more thing to do on the front. So we're going to we're going to do this just so that we can get excited about how it's looking. All right. And it'll keep us moving on so we can get done. All right. Next thing you're going to do is line up the tops of your back panel and the tops of your side gusset. Now she's going to get close here because of this, but you can do it. You can do it. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing because I can't see what I'm doing. So, <laughs> all right. Just clip all the way around and then we're going to take it to the sewing machine and sew it at a quarter of an inch all the way around. I do want to mention before you start sewing this part, um, when you're putting the back panel to your gusset, you can, when you're sewing, kind of pull this out of the way so that when you're closing this up, you're not catching this because it is very, very close to your seam. So just pull this out of the way and then go ahead and start sewing. Hopefully that helps make sense because on this side I didn't do that and then I accidentally got my top panel. So argh, make sure that you pull it out of the way when you start to sew so that you don't sew that. to finish the front panel and add our magnetic snap. There's a little black line and if you take your washer we're gonna put it right on top of that little line. It should fit right your your hole should be right on top of that black line and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a marking pen and mark on each side of that black line so that you can find where your little slits are going to be. Then you're going to get yourself some of that one-sided uh, interfacing. It's a little thicker and it'll go on the back of your um, design. So let's do that real quick. Got that black line right in the middle. I made my little marks. I'm going to take my seam ripper and I'm just going to go up just a tiny bit. Go on this side. Go up just a tiny bit. Then I'm going to put that in there like that. And I've already seam ripped this. I'm going to lay that down. And then put your washer on top. And then you're just going to press those washers to the side. There we go. My thumbs are done, you guys. I had to do a bunch of magnetic snaps, and my thumbs are like done. All right, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our body piece that we've been working on. Um, I did add purse feet to mine that you can't see. <laughs> uh, if you want to add purse feet, you can. It's up to you. Um, it's not in the pattern placement, which is fine. You don't have to. I just wanted to add it. Um, the next thing that you need to do is you need to make a little notch down at the bottom so that you can match up the notches to your purse. And I always start at the bottom. And then what you're going to do is go up the sides. We're going to get this outside finished so that we can add it to our lining. And I don't think I said this in the beginning, but I did add the Decoville light to all of my panels except for this green panel because that would have been really thick. But I made sure that there was about a quarter of an inch, a little over a quarter of an inch, maybe five eighths, I'm not sure, uh, away from the edge. Because when we get done, we're going to take this edge that doesn't have the Decoville light and we're going to be folding it in because we're doing a drop lining. And having a line to follow makes it so much easier when you're trying to do this. So just make sure that when you're cutting out your Decoville lights, you do that first. And then when you go to do everything else, it'll just make it so much easier. So I'm going to clip this up 
and then I'm going to sew it just like I did this other side and then we'll get the lining and you're almost done. Alright guys, we are at the home stretch and I'm going to go ahead and apologize for the sound. I had to turn a fan on. It is really hot here. I don't know why all of a sudden. Okay, we're at the home stretch. You're almost done. Look how cute she is. Alright, now next thing you're going to do is you're going to fold down the top of your vinyl. Um, if you made your Decaville light shorter than your panel, it'll be a whole lot easier. I normally just fold it down right there where the um, Decaville light is and it just lays nice and flat and it's easy to just kind of fold down. And there you go. Alright, now we're going to grab our lining. It is entirely up to you which direction you want it to go. If you want, when you look in the purse, if you want to see the zipper first, you can put it like that. If you want to see the credit cards when you're peeking in your purse, do it that way. I think I'm going to put it so you see the credit cards when you look into the purse. So just stick your lining in there. And then, yeah, as soon as you open your purse, there's your credit cards. All right. Now, whatever uh, measurement that you fold it over, you're going to need to do the same thing to your lining. And we have a center mark, a center notch cut out in our lining fabric, and we have a center notch cut out in our outer fabric. So we're just going to clip all the way around, making sure that the notches match up and making sure that our lining sits nice and neat. Now, I will tell you, when we did this, I made sure that you guys backstitched back and forth a couple of times because we were coming to this part. When we get ready to sew the top stitching all the way around, you're going to need to fold this out of the way so that you can get this top stitching really good. So when you're folding and putting it underneath your machine, you need to just kind of pull this top out of the way. And be careful because you don't want to pop any stitches either. So just keep that in mind um, when you're getting ready to top stitch it. So I'm going to clip this all up and then I will take you to the sewing machine when we go to do the top stitching. Alright guys, so what did you think? Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully it was an easy sew for you guys. Um, I always tell everybody, watch the videos all the way through first and just make sure that there's, sometimes I put little tips in there that I don't think about until I've after I've sewn something. So <laughs> make sure that you watch the videos all the way through so that you can kind of get those tips along the way. The, the purse is a generally easy sew. You can get through it pretty quickly. It's the book bag that's going to take just a little bit longer. Um, so if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe and see some of the other fun stuff that's coming, you can just click that subscribe button and that way you won't miss out. If you have any questions, comments, leave them in the comment section. I do check those daily. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, hopefully I, I cleared and covered everything. If not, just leave them in the comment section and I'll get to those. Thanks, Kenny B, for collaborating with me on this because I really thought it turned out cool and I just can't wait to like see how everybody reacts to it. So let me know. I'm also, you guys, I'm also on Instagram. So if you guys want to make some of these creations or some of the other videos that I've done and you want to share them with me and you want me to see them, make sure that you tag me at FaithWorks Designs. I would love to see your creations no matter what it is. If you've adjusted something in the pattern or you've done something different, I would love to see it. Make sure that you tag me in it. Thanks again for joining us on Faith First Designs. Bye, guys.